In this video, I will demonstrate how to set up and configure Route Advertisement. Before I get started with the demo, let me explain what Route Advertisement is. The purpose of Route Advertising is to share available routes that exist on the enterprise network with other routers. This assists the routers with making routing decisions. Routing protocols facilitate the collection of neighboring router information, which is then advertised for all other nodes via the network. In simple terms, this feature is used for routers to learn of the existence of neighboring routers, allowing for efficient routing of data and packets. Therefore, this feature is commonly used in enterprise applications or deployments rather than for personal networks. Peplink routers support several routing protocols, including OSPF, RIPv2, and BGP. OSPF and RIPv2 are both interior gateway protocols. What this means is that they allow users to exchange routes with other routers in the network. On the other hand, Peplink routers also support BGP routing, which is an exterior gateway protocol. This means that it allows for the exchange of routes between routing domains on the internet. That being said, BGP can also be used for sharing internal routes as well. So what is OSPF? OSPF, which stands for Open Shortest Path First, is a link state routing protocol that is used to find the best path between the source and the destination router using its own shortest path first. As mentioned previously, it is an interior gateway protocol, meaning that it aims to move packets within a large autonomous system or routing domain. It is a network layer protocol that works on protocol number 89 and uses AD value 110. There are a few criteria for the router in order to use OSPF. The first criteria is that both routers should be present in the same area. The second requirement is the subnet mask should be the same. Also, the hello and dead timer should be the same. The subflag must also match for both routers. And finally, the authentication must match as well. The advantages of using OSPF are that you can use load balancing with equal cost routes for the same destination. VLSM and route summarization is possible. Unlimited hop counts are available. You can trigger updates for fast convergence. You can use loop-free topology using the SPF algorithm. It runs on most routers, and finally, it is a classless protocol. Now I'll briefly describe RIPv2. RIP, which stands for Routing Information Protocol, is an interior gateway routing protocol as well, used by routers to exchange routing information. RIP uses hop count as a routing metric. The maximum number of hops allowed for RIP is 15. This hop limit essentially limits the size of networks that RIP can support. RIPv2 is the second version of RIP and differs from RIPv1 in the following ways. Firstly, RIPv2 is a classless routing protocol, whereas RIPv1 isn't. RIPv2 includes subnet masks in the routing update. RIPv2 multicasts the entire routing table to all adjacent routers, 224.0.0.9. The advantages of using RIPv2 is that it is a standardized protocol, it's VLSM compliant, it provides fast convergence, meaning that it sends triggered updates when the network changes. Finally, it works with snapshot routing, making it ideal for dial networks. Last but not least, I'll go over what BGP is and its advantages. BGP stands for Border Gateway Protocol. This is a gateway protocol that enables the internet to exchange routing information between autonomous systems. BGP takes into consideration all the different peering options a router has and chooses the one closest to where the router is. Each potential peer communicates the routing information it has and that gets stored within a routing information base. BGP can access this information and use it to choose the best peering option. A key benefit of using BGP is that it can find the best path compared to OSPF, which finds the fastest. Another benefit is the fact that it is extremely flexible and also has the ability to do load balancing. Before we get started, it is also important to understand what Speed Fusion VPN routing isolation is. Speed Fusion VPN isolation is essentially a method to stop exchanging routing tables automatically by isolating Speed Fusion VPN peers from each other. Received Speed Fusion VPN routes will not be forwarded to other Speed Fusion VPN peers to reduce bandwidth consumption. 
It is important to note that enabling the Speed Fusion VPN route isolation function will only hide routing information between Speed Fusion VPN peers. If you want to fully block inter Speed Fusion VPN traffic, you should configure your firewall instead. Before I start the demo today, I'll go through the network topology for the OSPF demo. Our network topology today consists of three peplink routers. We have the Max HD2, the Balance 20X, and the Max BR1 Mini. The BR1 Mini is connected to the LAN port of the Balance 20X, and the Balance 20X is connected to the Max HD2 via WAN. There is a speed fusion tunnel between the Balance 20X and the Max HD2. The goal of today's demo is to make the Max HD2 learn the routing from the Max BR1 Mini OSPF via Speed Fusion. The first step for me would be to create a Speed Fusion tunnel between the Max HD2 and the Balance 20X. As this video isn't focusing on setting up a Speed Fusion tunnel, I will skip this step. If you want to know how to create a Speed Fusion tunnel, then please watch my demo for that. I've added the link to the description below. So once the Speed Fusion Tunnel has been set up between those devices, I can go to the web admin page for the Max BR1 Mini. Then I can confirm the network settings under the Network tab. After that, I can go to the Advanced tab and then go to the Routing Protocol section. Here we have two options. The first tab is for configuring the OSPF and RIPv2 settings. The second tab is for configuring the BGP settings. To enable the OSPF or RIPv2 routing, you need to head to the OSPF and RIPv2 tab. Once you've done that, you can define a new OSPF area for OSPF routing by clicking New OSPF Area. After clicking that, you'll see the option for creating a new area ID. Also, you can decide the type of link you want to create, whether it's broadcast or point-to-point. -point. A point-to-point -point network type is as its name implies, a connection between two specific points or OSPF routers. On a point-to-point -point link, a packet delivered from one of the routers will always have precisely one recipient. It does not maintain a DB-BDR relationship, and it has a 10-second hello and 40-second dead timer. Least lines running point-to-point -point protocol and high-level data link control are some examples of point-to-point -point links. The broadcast network type is the default network type for an OSPF-enabled Ethernet interface. It requires a link that supports Layer 2 broadcast. It requires the use of a DR-BDR relationship and has a 10-second hello and 40-second dead timer. For this demo, I'll be selecting the default option, which is the broadcast link type. Below that, you can also select the authentication method. The options include None, Text, and MD5. The difference between the last two options are that text is non-encrypted, where clear text passwords are used. But for MD5, on the other hand, it is encrypted with MD5. MD5, which stands for Message Digest Algorithm 5, will generate a 128-bit hash value to make the password more secure. For this demo, I will be selecting None, as it is just a demo. Finally, you can select the interfaces. This is to decide who should join the exchange. The options will include untagged LAN, VLAN, WAN, or PETVPN. For RIPv2 routing, you can select the authentication method and interfaces in the section below. The configuration options are the same as OSPF. For the Max BR1 Mini, since it is connected to the Balance 20X through the BR1 Mini's WAN port, I will be selecting WAN for this option. In the section below, you can select specific networks which will be advertised over OSPF and RIPv2. If no network is selected, all LAN VLAN networks will be advertised by default. For the Max BR1 Mini, I've selected VLAN 33 and the untagged LAN that was shown on the network settings page earlier. I will also enable static route advertising and insert the subnet mask. For the Balance 20X, I will create the new area in the OSPF and RIPv2 page. But this time, the selected interfaces will be the untagged LAN, which is the connection to the BR1 Mini, and also the Speed Fusion VPN option, which is the connection to the Max HD2. Then, for the Route Advertisement section below, I will keep it the same. This way, all the LAN VLAN networks will be advertised when no network advertising is chosen. Finally, for the Max HD2, I need to go to the same tab on the web admin page for that device. Then, for the interfaces under the OSPF settings, I will only have the Speed Fusion VPN selected, as it is the only route available for this device. 
Then for the final table, it will be the same as the balance device, except for the fact that I need to enable static route advertising and insert the relevant subnet mask. Once that is complete, you will have finished setting up your OSPF routing configuration. To confirm that it is working, head to the Status tab and check under the OSPF and RIPv2 settings. Here you can see that all my devices are aware of all the possible routes in this network, and it is currently operating with OSPF. For my BGP demo, as shown on the screen, the network topology will be different. For this demo, I will only be using two devices. I will have my Balance 20X connected to the Max BR1 Mini. The cable will be connected to the LAN port of the Balance 20X and the WAN port of the BR1 Mini. The purpose of doing so is to make the B20X learn the routing of the Max BR1 Mini. To set up BGP routing, you need to head to the BGP tab under Routing Protocols. The first step would be to create a new profile. I will be starting off with the Balance 20X model first. For the BGP setup, it is split into four main sections. The first one is the basic BGP profile. Here, you can insert a profile name, select the interface, and insert a router ID. Also, it is important to input the device's autonomous system number, also known as ASN, under the relevant section. Then, for the part labeled as neighbor, you need to fill in a table. The first two columns are for entering IP addresses, the ASN and the other information for BGP neighbors. So here, I will be inserting the Max BR1 Mini's WAN IP and ASN. In the third column, you have the choice to enable multi-hop TTL. If enabled, you need to enter a time-to-live value between 2 and 255, if the neighbor is not on the same network. The fourth column is for passwords. If needed, you can insert a password for MD5 authentication of the BGP session. If a password isn't required, you can leave it empty. The final column is for AS path prepending. Here, make sure you insert a comma separating local ASN to be prepended to the AS path when propagating routes to neighbors. The next section in the BGP profile configuration is for setting up hold time. This is the time required to wait for a keep alive message from a neighbor before considering the BGP connection is staled. The value needs to be in seconds and must be either 0, which is infinite hold time, or between 3 and 65,535 inclusively. The default setting is 240 seconds. The next step would be to enable or disable the next hop self setting. This is the option to advertise your own source address as next hop when propagating routes. The final two configurations for setting up the BGP profile are IBGP local preference and the BFD. The IBGP local preference is the metric advertised to IBGP neighbors to indicate the preference for external routes. The value must be between 0 to 4,294,967,295 inclusively, but the default setting is 100. Finally, enabling the BFD is to add bidirectional forwarding detection for path failure detection. All directly connected neighbors use the same physical interface and share the same BFD setting. All multi-hop neighbors share the same multi-hop BFD settings. You can configure BFD settings in the BGP profile listing page after this option is enabled. The next section on this page is the route advertisement section. The first row allows you to select the type of network that will be advertised. The next row is for enabling static route advertising, which is the option to advertise LAN static routes. Here, you can input additional routes to be advertised to the BGP neighbor. The next row, which is called Advertise OSPF Route, which, if enabled, can provide you the option to advertise OSPF routes. The final part of this section is Set Community. This assigns communities to matched prefixes. The next section on this page is for Route Import. Here, you have the option to filter networks. For this configuration, there are four options. You can select None, Accept, Reject, or Exact Match. By selecting None, then no networks will be filtered. By selecting Accept, listed networks will be accepted. If you select Reject, then listed networks will be rejected. Finally, if you select Exact Match, then only routes with the same networks and subnet masks will be filtered. Otherwise, routes within the network and subnets will be filtered. The final section in the BGP configuration is for Route Export. This section has been split into three parts. There is the first part, which is to select the filter mode. The options are the same as the route import section. 
Then there's also export to other BGP profiles. This is the option to export BGP routes to other BGP profiles. Finally, there's also the option to export BGP routes to OSPF. Now that the Balance 20X has been set up, I will move on to setting up the BGP profile for the Max BR1 Mini. When I go to the BGP tab for the Max BR1 Mini, I will see the BGP profile that I already created on the web admin of my Balance model. Now I have to add another profile, but this time I need to input the Max BR1 Mini's ASN in the appropriate section. Then for the section about neighbors, I need to put the Balance 20X's LAN IP and ASN. Then I also need to export the network by adding the IP address in the Network Advertising section. In my case, I need to add the VLAN ID, so that the devices can communicate with each other and share routes. Finally, to check the BGP status, head to the Status tab on Web Admin and click on BGP. Here you will be able to see the status of the profiles you set up. It is important to check on the imported or exported routes and the LAN and WAN IP address. If I'm looking at the BGP status for my Balance20X's web admin page, then I'll be looking at the imported routes. If I'm looking at the BGP status for my Max BR1 Mini, then I'll be looking at the exported routes. In both cases for me, the number should be 1, since I only have one other device.